Let's bring in our political panel to discuss Brat's historic upset victory. With me, our commentator and Republican consultant, Margaret Hoover, and Will Kane, commentator and columnist for conservative publication, TheBlaze.com. All right, so Margaret, to you first on this one. John King here at CNN says that it was arrogance that was behind this. What do you think? Well, there is some evidence to suggest that that could be true. For example, $1.5 million was left in Eric Cantor's war chest at the end of this. He didn't spend all the money he had going after Brad. That said, he did spend $5 million. He did have about 23 staffers in his office. It's not, it's not that he didn't take it seriously, but there is a real question of whether he took the threat seriously mm -hmm. enough. And Will, a lot of people, you know, are, are shaking their head. How did they not see this coming? Because right. some people on the ground have said that there was this attitude of uh, ABC, anyone but Cantor, but that right. Cantor himself and his team did not pick up on that. Yeah, you know, I mean, there is certainly a sentiment across this nation that is throw the bums out. Incumbency is its own weight. And it, it came to be seen that Eric Cantor was serving a constituency in Washington, D.C., not in Virginia. And that's why you hear slogans like ABC. I have to say, Randy, so we hear Hillary Clinton saying that this was about immigration and that Dave Bratt was essentially, what, opposed to any form of immigration. I don't that is what I'm sure Hillary wants it to be about, mm -hmm. that issue. She thinks she wins on. But I think this has much more to do with the p local politics of Virginia. We try to pull these big stories out of it, and it has to do with those people that went door to door in Virginia. Yeah. And it, let's be clear, this was, you know, 12% electorate turnout. So all, all this guy needed, Brat needed, was 6.1% of the primary electorate. In closed partisan primaries, they do not represent the majority of that district, let alone America. So to, for the Tea Party to be emboldened, which they surely are, is actually misreading the tea leaves here. I think even saying it's the Tea Party is a little bit of a stretch. He couldn't get a return call from most Tea Party organizations. I'm talking about Dave Brat. Right, so right. this is an upset. It is an upstart against an incumbent. I'm sure. Not, I'm not sure all the rest of the That's narratives right. we, want, right. we want to put on it are necessarily well, true. Well, wasn't the Tea Party right. actually looking not even really to back him? They're looking to right. back other candidates that, that have a better shot, right? But, and, but what's at risk here is the entire effectiveness of the GOP caucus, frankly, because Boehner and Cantor, while they had a contentious relationship at times, had learned to work together and, frankly, needed each other and needed each other's coalitions. Now that Cantor's been knocked out and has removed himself from leadership, mm -hmm. there is a very strong chance that you're going to get somebody else in that number two position who frankly doesn't have the backing of the Tea Party caucus or who frankly does have the Tea Party backing of the Tea Party caucus and then the ability to actually get anything done forget well, immigration this is where Margaret and I have to have to part ways here I am not that is this much the only of a, place really Come uh, on. Well, no we have others I'm sure but uh, where I'm not that much of a believer in let's get professional mm -hmm. governors in professional politicians guys who know what they're doing who are experienced there's no doubt Eric Cantor was a good politician as far as working the back rooms but I believe in the you know new blood is good blood yeah. Um, yeah. As, as, as a default mechanism, new is good. So who do you think... Mark, Turnover. It's not, who who yeah. do you think it hurts and who do you think it helps? Uh, this hurts John Boehner. This hurts... Uh, look, it depends who runs. Jeff Sessions is it looks like going to run for majority leader. Kevin McCarthy's going to run for majority leader. Kathy Morris Rogers is probably going to run for majority leader. Why would it hurt John Boehner? Uh, hurts John Boehner if, if he doesn't get somebody who he can partner with that can sort of help corral the Tea Party caucus and help corral his entire he really, caucus. I mean, he really depended on Cantor they for access, absolutely right? absolutely had a symbiotic relationship that made the effectiveness of the GOP House, to the extent that it was effective, it was because of that relationship, which is now totally mm -hmm. gone. Let me offer you one person that it hurts, hurts, and this is the most important thing to take from this race. Margaret mentioned it. Eric Cantor spent $5 million. Dave Bratt spent $100,000. This hurt people believe that believe money is a corrosive effect in politics and that it dictates our outcomes. It clearly yeah. does not. So Cantor was always like, you know, the, the no guy, as they say, in the in the Obama discussions. I mean, who, who's going to be who's going to be that person? I mean, <laughs> I mean you look, you, you have now a Tea Party caucus who's emboldened. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you're going to be hearing a lot more no from the Tea Party caucus. If you have a Jeff Sessions as the majority leader, Frankly, you're going to be hearing a lot more no from the Republican House. Like to the extent that people may not have liked Eric Cantor, there's going to be a lot more John Stewart, you know, comedic rips at the GOP for being obstructionist after this. And what do you think Bratt's greatest challenge is from here on in, Will? Well, his greatest challenge, and I think I'm, I think he'll live up to it, is to represent his own constituents. And if you listen to anything right. Dave Bratt said, that's what the message he rammed home over and over. I am here to respond to the constituents in this district in Virginia, and I will be accountable to them. I think that's what you, every one of these guys, that's what their job mm -hmm. is to do. It's not to work the back rooms of D.C., not to rise in leadership, not to spend 20 years getting reelected to the same position over and over. It's to spend a short time representing your people well. And so what happens to immigration now? 
It's not, I mean, it's certainly it's not, like this does not bode well for it. You know, if there's, a, if there's this interesting question about why uh, why Cantor has decided to step down. I mean, there's sort of the altruist outside of Washington wonders whether he might not be liberated, not having to serve the GOP caucus anymore, mm -hmm. and just forget the lame duck. Why not just try to get immigration reform through? Uh, well, do just, the right, right thing because you're not held accountable. You, I mean, you, you, you've already paid the ultimate price. You've lost right. your seat, so or just, just go for it. the good policy now. Right. Go for the good governance. We'll not do it comprehensively. Just don't do it comprehensively. Right. You can get immigration reform through. Will, Margaret, nice to see you guys. Thank Thanks, you. Randy.